What's up, everybody? Happy Thursday night. It's your boy Al. I'm here on a Thursday night um, by myself at home with my son. He's asleep. Um, but I'm here alone with my son because my wife and some family members are out at the Erica Badu concert. So I'm having to talk to y'all tonight because my old baby left me to go see Badu. <laughs> Love Erica Badu. I think my wife has every album in the catalog except for like one. Every piece of vinyl except for like one. Still got to get that for her. Um, but that's okay because Sunday night we're going to see Whiskey at her favorite. My wife loves Afrobeats. See, y'all love Afrobeats? What do y'all think about Afrobeats? I like it. Um, it's grown on me. <clears throat> and I'm always, because I'm so, I get musically bored so easily. Um, Afrobeats was easy for me to get into. But my wife and I actually recently... Went to our first Afrobeats event. It was like this festival here in Houston. Um, <clears throat> and went to Afrobeats like live DJs, concert, whatever. And uh, my wife was like trying to get all immense, immersed in the culture. She's there, we're there. And um, listening, she's listening to the music, trying to catch on the new music. And she's looking at the dance floor, trying to see what they're doing on the dance floor to, to add people from Africa and try to see what the dances are. She's looking, trying to see what they're doing. And, uh, very interested in that culture. <laughs> The culture and that pe uh, of people in uh, Africa, um, a very interesting culture. Um, um, it's a little bit different from American culture. I know growing up, I'm 44 years old. Um, historically, for most of my life, when the music hits, the beat drops in the club or in a, in a, in a uh, environment where you dance, the women usually run to the floor and the men try to play it cool until you know they get to the dance floor after enough guys at the dance floor. But in that culture, like as soon as the music book hit, boom, all the dudes run into the dance floor doing their tribal dances, whatever dances they're doing. It's very interesting to see like the women like sitting always there and the dudes like hitting the dance floor, like doing whatever little dances they were doing. It was crazy. Um, but yeah, I enjoy it. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing Wiz Kid uh, with my baby. Um, but I want to talk about Sage Steel. Miss Sage, I hate my black side steel. Got sat down, taken off the air from ESPN. Sage Steele is notorious for um, taking a stand against any um, any black issue. Um, she's notorious for taking the stance against black folks in whatever issue. Sage Steele, I don't know if you know, an ESPN anchor, biracial, um, has... Um, has transitioning kids. I call them transitioning kids because if you're a biracial woman, a biracial man, and you have kids with a white woman or white man, then you're trying to transition your kids out of blackness because her kids don't look nothing like they're black. She's trying to get transition all the blackness out of her kids because she hates blackness. She hates her blackness. Her father started it, and now she's continuing it. I have a friend, um, cool guy, but he's doing the same thing. He's biracial man and white woman. Now you look at his kids, Post pictures of kids all the time on social media. Not a speck of black. He, that, that's a plan. that's a go. Uh, but we'll get into that in a minute. But Sage has come under fire again. Been taken off the air by ESPN for making statements uh, against the virus, a coronavirus, against the vaccine, um, and then against uh, President Obama and identifying as black. And she basically brought up him identifying himself as black, even though his father was absentee and said that's interesting. Um, that he would identify as black even though his father was absentee. Um, very interesting. Because when you look at the man, he's obviously black or, bi or whatever you call it. He's, he's biracial. Uh, let me address the biracial people in Sage Steel and people like Sage Steel. Um, okay, I get it. We don't have to go by the 1% rule, no more the one drop rule, which was... Um, if you got one drop of black blood in you, you consider black. Goes back to the slavery days. It's how they separated blacks from whites um, and maintained the purity of the white race. Basically, that idea came from Master not being able to keep it in his pants with his wife and going over and, and tasting some of the sweetness of the black women having a child, child being biracial, um, going down the line, and then basically they having to identify use the rule if you have one drop of black blood, 1% or 10% of black blood, and you're black. People want to do away with that. Okay, cool. But here's what's happening. 
uh, with people who consider biracial. And I hear this argument all the time. Biracial people should have their own race because they have their own struggles. Um, they have their own uh, uh, de uh, things to deal with. That's okay. But what I get is that the quickness to have your own race because of your own struggles is because you want to as quickly and expediently as possible remove yourselves from the struggles of being identified with anything that's black. Because anytime an issue is brought up with a biracial person identifying with their blackness, here comes the firestorms. And Daya recently said she wants to be cast as a black woman. She wants to do things as a black woman. And she immediately came under fire. And people were making all kind of harsh statements. Like, You're not where you are because of your blackness. You didn't get cast as a leading girl in Batman, because, I mean, in, in Spider-Man because of your blackness. It's just immediately dousing flames on her blackness. You know, say still. Dousing flames on Barack Obama's blackness. Your black father, when so how can you identify as black? Because when you look in the mirror, he sees pigment. Um, he sees pigmentation. He sees color. And <clears throat> there seems to be from the biracial community a urgency, a frenzied urgency to be identified as your own own, own race, uh, your own ethnicity. Primarily because you want to be removed from the black struggle. Yeah, you have your struggles, you know, not being able to, you know, the black girls making fun of the biracial girl and the white girls not really accepting it. Okay, I get it. But what I see is people want, is, is the biracial community wanting to be removed completely from the black struggle. What I mean is this. They, they want... When, when they want a world where even though I have even though I'm, I'm brown skin I have I'm, I'm beige I'm vanilla whatever you want to say when you see me don't see me as one of them don't put their struggle on me don't pull me over don't racially profile me don't give me the trouble that you give a black person don't ask me for two forms of idea. I'm not with them I'm not one of them Nobody ever, nobody by racial ever brings up their whiteness as a negative. It's always the blackness, always the blackness. Whenever somebody by racial identifies as black or uh, uh, the color that they are or away from white, um, it's a problem. One of my favorite actresses is Jessica Alba. Jessica Alba is Hispanic. She has some percentage white in her. It goes back to her lineage. But Jessica Alba has ha always had struggles staying consistent in her acting. And one of the reasons why Jessica Alba has had consistency staying relevant in her acting is because white Hollywood has always had a tro had trouble casting her as a white girl. They've always wanted someone that, with that level of beauty. They've always wanted to cast someone white, whether it be Sue Storm in, in, in The Fantastic Four or Nancy Callahan in Sin City. They've always wanted to cast her as someone white. I remember when she first hit the scene, she, you know, had, a, you know, beige complexion, tan complexion. And a couple of years later, I started to see her on red carpets and she was white as snow. Why? Because she was trying to go along with the program. We need you to be white because your beauty can't be Hispanic. Your beauty can't be Latino. Your beauty has to be white. So let us cast you as Sue. Let us cast you as Nancy Callahan. People are always trying to move people of color away from their color. Then... Her husband, Cash Warren, her f his father is a black man, 100% black man. Um, Mary White had Cash, Cash married Jessica. Now, most of the black remnants are removed from uh, that family, his, his family. Um, his father was an actor, and I believe it was Trapper John MD, one of those early doctor shows preceding ER. Um, pretty, pretty well known guy. But his grandkids don't look nothing like him. Uh, there is a contingency of people who like to remove the blackness from their biracial state. Let's let's go on with this. Uh, let's we talk about the trouble that Z Zendaya has for wanting to identify as black. What about um, Rashida Jones? Never even bothering to identify as black. If we're going to crush Zendaya for wanting to play a black woman. Why don't we crush Rashida Jones for going out and playing all a 100% white woman 
and never even mentioning the fact that her father is Quincy freaking Jones. I mean, we know it now, but she's been a white woman on office, on every, on every movie she's been in. She's been a pure white woman, never biracial, white, 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 white. But nobody ever crushes her saying, you down, down playing your blackness, though, because she, the, the, the goal is to let me separate from the black, not the white, just the black. Just uh, 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 Jennifer Bills from Flashdance fame. Jennifer Bills, a lot of people don't even know this. I didn't know it until I watched The Devil in the Blue Dress. It's by Rachel. Um, Flash, and she's considered one of the reasons why it's rumored that her career stalled from being an A-list actress, as beautiful and talented as she is, is because she would not break from identifying herself as black. And not in taking roles as a black or hair black woman. Devil in the Blue Dress with Denzel Washington. She plays a hair black woman. Um, the show L Word. Where she's Bet Porter. She plays a half black woman. A biracial woman who was half sisters. With Kit who was played by Pam Greer. Who both of their fathers was the late Ozzie Davis. Um, who, as a matter of fact one of the last scenes of the show. Um, and it happened that the season was released the year Ozzy passed. The scene was Ozzy on his deathbed and Bet and Kit laying their heads on his bedside as he passed away on the show. And then after that show, they showed, you know, R.I.P. Ozzy Davis. But she always identified as a black woman or as a, ha as a, as a biracial woman. She wouldn't put that aside. And because of that, she didn't get certain roles and, and credentials that she probably deserved. Um, and she's one heck of an actress. I watched it to show L Word because it was great acting in it. She was a heck of an actress, um, but she didn't get the, the props she deserved because she wouldn't break away from being identified as a black woman. She would not do it. Still does not to this day. She does not do it. And she got, you know, she's B-list actress to this day. It's her career suffered because she wouldn't let Hollywood paint her as a white woman. She wouldn't, you know, rescind her blackness. And so I see um, with people like Sage Steele, who, again, married a white man who now divorced. So how, what are you, since you're talking about Barack's father's absentee, what are you going to tell your kids about? And I'm not going to attack our family, but her kids, she married a white man and her dad married a white woman, had her, she's biracial, she marries white men. So you see the blackness just, that's why I say, you know, it's, it's transitioning the blackness out of the family. Her kids don't look, they don't look biracial at all. Look white, 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 white. Transitioning the blackness out because we want that out because we don't want your struggle. We don't want the police brutality against us and we don't want to not get jaws because we black or be discriminated against. So we want out of the experience. And what, to me, biracial people are saying is we want out of the black experience. We want out. Unless it benefits us. We want out. And evidence to me that society still sees you as black, you need to look no further than Dante Wright. Dante Wright was a young man who was murdered um, by the cop who thought her gun was her taser. Well, Dante is identified in the news that another cop kills another black man. But guess what Dante is? Guess what color his mother is? His mother's white. When his mother spoke, his mother's white. He's biracial. But the cops still see him as black. And that's what biracial people want out of. They want out of being seen as the same as me. Particularly if you're a person who has a black or a biracial son. See, for a lot of the biracial women, they don't have to deal with this because biracial women are all the way now. All the ball players want a biracial woman. They want all the, 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 the exotics, they call them. So they're, they're, they're winning. But for people like Brother Dante Wright, they still got to deal with the fact that society still sees you as a black man, even if you have a white mother or a white father. And that's what the biracial community wants out of. They want out of being involved and in being looked at by society as black. So there's this push. We're not them. Don't treat us like them. We're our own. And if you're going to be your own, be your own. But don't be your own because you don't want to be connected to us because you'll always be connected to us. Because as a mother or father that looks like me or darker than me or lighter than me, 
I mean, your hair will always say you're connected to me. Your skin color will always be connected to me. And the only way you get out is do a sage deal, do my homeboy did, do what Kaz Warns did, transition that blackness out. Transition it out. And I see it, I see it being transitioned out every day. I see biracial people transitioning that blackness out. Out, out, get it out, get it out of here. I don't want, I don't want nobody that looks black. I, I'm half black. Find me a well white man. Where a white woman? I want, I want to marry them because I, I want out of this. I don't, I don't want my son to have to deal with a Dante Wright situation where even though um, he's biracial, they still look at him as black. So my issue with biracial people is um, stop wanting out of your blackness so bad. Stop wanting out of the black experience so bad. Stop wanting out of um, being connected to black people so bad because I don't see when when a, when a biracial person plays a um, white actor or a white role or anything I don't, I don't see the i don't see the firestorm i don't see that at all hell look at zoe zaldana had to darken down to get you know a role as dina simone and that were content that was a contingency people said she is acting she can do whatever she want no but and then look at what zoe zaldana man a white man transitioning that blackness out so for me I'm all about live and let live. But when you come for me and you come for, for who I am and you paint that as a negative and, and so much so that you want out, you don't want to be connected to me, it has to be addressed. And Sage Steele is one that has always, 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 always had something to say negative when about Black Lives Matter, about, you know, black ball players when they make a, take a stance about Colin Kaepernick. Anytime there's something that's a black issue, with her black father, she's going to take the other side. She's never going to stand with black people at all. And too many black people. Um, Larry, Larry Elder, Candace Owens, transit black, married a black or white woman, married a white man. Transition. They're not even biracial, but they already started. I got to get this black out of here because I can't stand these niggas. I can't stand me and I can't stand people around me. So I need to transition this stuff out of me. And that's what that's what we're seeing. We're seeing um, biracial people. They're they're they they're, they're checking out. You know, it, it was a, a, a common thing um, in in days post slavery for people who were biracial if they could get away with it to pass as white because that was an easier road. And you would think in twenty twenty one that biracial people wouldn't have to do that. They say, no, no, no I'm 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 half black. I, I'm good. I, I I'm I'm you know. I'm not trying to check out of my blackness because that's who my father is. That's who my mother is. I'm not going to deny them. I'm not going to try to check out. But no, these days, mm -mm. nope. 2021, still want out. 2021, still want to be something else. So if you want to be your own race, if you want to be your own ethnicity, be your own ethnicity. But don't try to downplay and don't try to speak negatively or ill about the black side. Of you, if 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 you're not going to speak negative, and I don't like to speak negative about the white side of you either, because the white and the black is what makes you beautiful. But don't want so quickly out of the black experience that you got to dog everybody who wants to identify with their black side, who wants to, and and, and no, you're not disrespecting your white side. By identifying your black side, but let's be real, whites ain't never been disrespected. What, what, you ain't, you've never heard of white people having to say, "Give me my respect." You've never had whites having to say, "Give me my rights." So when we lift the black side, we're lifting the side that has been historically oppressed. It's not you. And people say, "Oh, you, you're not going to identify the white." What are you saying about your white? You don't have to say nothing about your white. White is white. But when you see somebody by racial lifting their blackness, they're lifting the side that has been historically oppressed. They're doing it for their father who may not have made it that far. They're doing it for their mother who may have seen all kinds of trauma. They don't have to do it for their white mother, their white father. They see no trauma. Not like black people have. And, and, and what kills me is people, biracial people act like they don't get that. You know when you see a biracial person Lifting their blackness, you know why. You know historically what's been done to black people. So stop acting like you don't understand. So 
So say still, she's off the air. Um, I don't know how long she's going to be off the air, but if she don't come back again, I don't want to see her lose. She has kids to feed, you know. I want her to bounce back. Um, but I need, she needs to learn. Um, baby, you black. Biracial, whatever, but you black. Um, now your kids, they can tell a different story, but you black. Uh, don't forget to uh, click like, subscribe. Thank you all for supporting. Um, Man, I'm I'm so I'm sitting up here full off this gumbo. Uh, if you're in Houston and you need some of the best gumbo, exquisite taste catering, uh, their gumbo is phenomenal. Uh, spicy, but oh my god, I love spice. Um, I'm about to try to finish this up, um, but I'm gonna holler at y'all later on. Peace.